Should you upgrade from the free version of Grammarly to the premium version? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've been a Grammarly premium customer for several years now. It's a tool that I recommend to writers of all types, particularly professional writers. That said, the free version of Grammarly is just great. It will find and fix more grammar errors and writing mistakes in your work than the inbuilt grammar checker in Microsoft Word, in Google Docs, or on your operating system. And considering the premium version of Grammarly costs $30 per month, you may be wondering to yourself, do I even need to upgrade? Why should I consider upgrading in the first place? That's a good question to ask because I know many writers are on a budget. In this video, I'm going to give you my take. I'm going to give you seven different reasons why you may want to consider upgrading. And I'm going to show you some examples of the key features that you will get access to if you upgrade to the premium version of Grammarly. And of course, please remember you can upgrade for a month, use Grammarly for a big or important writing project, and then you can downgrade or cancel at any time. In other words, you can try the premium or version of Grammarly to improve your writing whenever you're ready. That said, let's get into seven different reasons why you may want to consider upgrading. And I hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The first reason why you may want to consider upgrading is because you want more context behind your grammar and writing mistakes. So I have open on screen the web app for Grammarly. And everything that I'm about to show you, you can do with the plugin for Chrome, with the plugin for your browser or for your operating system. So I'm gonna go into an article that I wrote uh, some time ago for one of my sites called How to Decide What to Work On Next. This article is all about how to make decisions about what to focus on uh, in your business. So it's a type of, type of entrepreneurship or productivity article. Now there's a number of grammar mistakes, writing issues and other errors in this particular article because I knocked it out pretty quickly. So Grammarly has underlined the grammar mistakes in red and it's underlined some other mistakes uh, in blue for clarity. So in this case, if I look at anything that's underlined in red, it's a potential grammar mistake. And because I'm in the premium version of Grammarly, there's some additional context behind the mistake in question. So here is one example. With a contents website, for example, fruition in terms of traffic or revenue can take a year or longer. Did you spot the mistake? Yes, it's an over or it's a misused S. So this should read with a content website. So when I click on this particular grammar mistake, grammar, Grammarly has flagged it as a grammar error. And of course I can just accept this at a click. But what if I was looking at this going, what exactly is wrong with this overused S or is, should it have an apostrophe? Well, I can click on learn more to get some context. Grammarly is providing me some more information about how to use singular versus plural nouns. And it's giving me some examples. So here's one. She counted her laptop as a business's expense. That's incorrect. She counted her laptop as a business expense. That's correct. The next example is kind of similar to the mistake that I made. The lunch-in was for journalists and government officials. Incorrect. The lunch-in was for journalists and government officials. Correct. So based on this, I can accept the suggestion that Grammarly has given me at a click. And I'm also getting a bit more context about why this suggestion makes sense. So in summary, summary Grammarly is acting as a type of grammar book. So if you're new to learning how to edit your writing or writing by others, if you publish content uh, online or if you're engaged in business writing and you're a little bit worried about some grammar mistakes or even writing in English, because perhaps English isn't your first language, this is a good way to copy edit your work and also to get a little bit of an education as you go so you can naturally improve your writing skills. And an interesting fact, I recently listened to an interview with the Grammarly CEO who said that Grammarly naturally encourages speak, people to speak in more grammatically correct sentences because they get into the habit of fixing these errors in their writing. The second reason why you may want to consider upgrading to the premium version of Grammarly is because you want full sentence rewrites. Full sentence rewrites are one of my favorite Grammarly premium features. They save me a lot of time editing my own writing and also editing writing by freelancers who work for the sites that I run. So in this case, this article describes or talks about Grammarly. Yes, I know it's all very meta. It says, for examples, so grammar mistake. For example, I rely on Grammarly almost every day to edit freelance writers work for my sites. So in this case, Grammarly is saying that this is unclear. Uh, it's a clarity issue uh, and I can click learn more to get some examples of why it's unclear versus clear. But it's also proposed a full sentence rewrite. So for example, comma, I rely on Grammarly almost daily to edit freelance writers work for my sites. And then I can click rewrite for clarity. Now, I always suggest as the writer, you need to make the best decision about these full sentence rewrites. It comes down to style, 
It comes down to your audience and it comes down to knowing the content in question. I get asked all the time, how can I accept all of Grammarly's changes? Don't do this. You need to make the best choice and review each one of these suggestions and figure out what's appropriate for your article in question. That said, these full sentence rewrites will save you a significant amount of time. The third reason why you may want to consider upgrading to Grammarly Premium is because you want a dedicated style guide. If you're not familiar with what a style guide is, it's basically a tool that professional writers use all the time to ensure that they're using punctuation, that they're using numbers, that they're using spellings and so on in their articles and professional writing consistently. It's what journalists use, it's what academics use and there are dozens of them available. The Chicago Manual of Style is one of the most popular style guides that you can get online. It's a kind of online reference guide that you need to pay an annual subscription for. So it costs $41 to subscribe to the Chicago Manual of Style uh, for the year. And then you can go in and refer to grammar issues and punctuation errors. But you get a lot of this inside of Grammarly. However, what if there's an unusual word or spelling that's not quite covered by Grammarly or that's flagged as an issue? Well, this is where the Grammarly style guide uh, comes into use. So simply log into your Grammarly web app, click on the admin panel, and then it will just take a second to load. Then you're going to look for the section called style guide. Now you can add custom words, terms, and grammar exceptions to your style guide. Let me give you a couple of examples. Example number one, HODL. I sometimes write about cryptocurrency and NFTs. You may not be familiar with the cryptocurrency space, but HODL is actually crypto slang for hold on for dear life. It's also a word that will be commonly flagged as a grammar error. However, to anybody who reads about crypto, this term is widely accepted. So I've added this to the Grammarly style guide as one to ignore and I put in an exclamation or an explanation about why this is grammatically okay. So if anybody else is using Grammarly uh, or my Grammarly accounts, they will know that this is fine. And Grammarly also won't flag this as a grammar error, but it will give me some context if it spots it in the article. It's easy enough to add rules to the Grammarly style guide. You can just click new rule, put in the original text, put in what you want to change it to and put in your explanation. Grammarly has some other examples. Here's one here. Employee typically refers to somebody who works for a company. However, some would say that it's not really an inclusive term. Team member is a lot more in vogue these days, and this is put in uh, by Grammarly as our company's preferred term for people who work for Grammarly. And oddly enough, I worked as a copywriter for a British software company, and we also used to refer to people as team members and not employees. Several years ago, I wrote a book called The Art of Writing a Non-Fiction Book. Uh, for this particular book, I had a hyphen between non and fiction. Now, whether I should have done this or not is a question of style rather than a grammar issue, but some grammar checkers will flag that as a grammar mistake. So to ensure that this isn't uh, changed to no hyphen and then I'm referring to the book inconsistently on my site and emails and social media, I put this in to the style guide so that it's okay to change nonfiction to nonfiction with a hyphen. So this is a great way of ensuring uh, that I'm referring to this book consistently uh, wherever I write about it. The fourth reason why you may want to consider upgrading is that you want a dedicated plagiarism checker. Many professional writers don't talk about this, but they use plagiarism checkers all the time to avoid accidental plagiarism. I was a journalist years ago and accidental plagiarism basically describes when you uh, take information or writing by somebody else and then you rewrite it, but then you forget to cite or attribute the source. And it's not a great thing to do because it can damage your reputation and it's unfair to your sources. The second reason why you may want a plagiarism checker, and I'm going to show you how it works now in a moment, is because it will help you f check your own articles to see if they've been misused online. So as an example here, I've pasted in an article about Masterclass into Grammarly. And if I click on the plagiarism checker, Grammarly will scan all of this text to see if there are any instances of where this text has been used elsewhere online. So this is good for me to see that if it's an important article on my site, has anybody else misappropriated it? And I've actually used the Grammarly plagiarism checker before and I've spotted some instances of where my content has been misused by other sites and then I issued a DMCA takedown request. So in this case, it's saying 99% of the text matches this source and then it provides me the link to my site. So that makes sense. And then it provides two other examples, but it only says 1% matches this source. So it's probably not anything to be concerned about. It just is probably worded pretty similarly. So I use the Grammarly plagiarism checker in a number of different ways. I use it firstly to check articles on my site and ensure they haven't been plagiarized. Secondly, if I'm vetting a new freelance writer, I will use the plagiarism checker uh, on their first article as part of the hiring process. 
And thirdly, I will use the plagiarism checker if I'm writing something and then I've forgotten a link or perhaps I'm concerned I haven't attributed somebody correctly. In other words, I consider it a part of the editing process. The fifth reason why you may want to consider upgrading to the premium version of Grammarly is you care about finding the right word. So let's say you've written an article and you've used a term or a word quite a lot in the article. Well, Grammarly will flag this as an overused word and give you some suggestions which can help you polish up your writing and make it more enjoyable for readers. So in this case, I've said, I also offer tips to help you answer the important question. And in this case, Grammarly is saying important is often overused. So it's a common term that could bore readers. And it's suggesting that I could use words like critical or vital. And it's also giving me some examples. Dora's new apartment is nice, is vague, whereas Dora's new apart apartment is lovely, is clear. So in this case, critical or vital could be more clear than using the word important. Now again, this comes down to a question of style. I may decide that important is perfectly okay to use, but it's great to have access uh, to a tool that will suggest some different words that I can use. Because prior to using this tool, I used to spend a lot of time going through a thesaurus and figuring out different words that I could use. And of course, it also works if you use a weird or unusual word that's complicated. Grammarly will also flag that and suggest a more easy to understand word that you can use in place. The sixth reason for upgrading is because you care about the tone of your writing in question. So tone basically describes how your writing sounds and how it communicates to your ideal reader. In other words, is it easy to understand or is it difficult to understand? Is it casual and informal or is it formal and businesslike? Depending on what you select with the premium version of Grammarly, it will tailor its suggestions uh, based on your goals. To use this particular feature, simply click on the goals section. So this is currently set to knowledgeable audience, a neutral formality, general domain, and describe and tell a story. So Grammarly has suggested 196 suggestions and given the article a score of 90 out of 100. So it's, it's pretty good and I've already copy edited the article. But what if I were to change this? Well, let's change this to formal. Let's change this to academic and let's change this to export and let's change this to inform. Now I'm gonna click done. And Grammarly will take a moment uh, to read through my article and it will immediately come up with different grammar suggestions that I may want to change. So now I have 525 suggestions to review. And that's probably because business articles and academic papers, which would refer to the goals that I've set here, uh, have a lot stricter guidelines about what you can and can't say. So for example, in a blog post or in an article that you're publishing online, it's fine to use contractions like I've versus I have. However, if I'm writing for academia or writing a business document, I may want to use more formal language. So in this case, I've said, and I've spent dozens of hours. So I've, and, this, and now Grammarly is suggesting that I replace this contraction with I have, and it's saying I may be too informal. Now again, I, the writer, need to make the right decision about whether this makes sense or not. To be honest, if I was writing an article or was writing a business paper for the company that I worked in previously to going full-time on my site, I, I don't think uh, contractions like this would cause an issue. However, a couple of years ago, I did write a thesis as part of a postgrad, and I know for a fact that uh, if I had used contractions like this, it would have caused an issue and could have potentially caused me to get a lower grade in the thesis in question. The seventh and final reason why you may want to consider upgrading to the premium version of Grammarly is because you value using an AI powered writing assistant that's improving all the time. So this is the number one feature in Grammarly that I use and I've saved the best for last. So basically it will review all of the grammar mistakes and issues in your writing and you can accept or reject them uh, at a glance or at a click. So normally what I do is I look at this box first if I'm in a rush and I will see what it's flagged. And then if I want to bin a suggestion, I can do so uh, by clicking on this. But in this case, all of these suggestions uh, make sense. So I'll simply collect or select accept all five and then my article will immediately have been improved. So this feature is getting more and more accurate as Grammarly improves its AI algorithm. And it's the number one feature that will save you time because it rolls in some correctness issues, some grammar errors and so on based on the writing goals that you've set. Those are the seven key reasons why you may want to consider upgrading from the free version of Grammarly to the premium version. It will find and fix more errors. It will give you context behind your writing and you'll get access to advanced tools like a plagiarism checker and the latest features inside of the Grammarly AI powered writing assistant. That said, if $30 is a bit much for you, you can always just try it for a month and then cancel or use it for a once off writing project. 
And to help, I've partnered with Grammarly to get a 20% plus discount that you can use. Now, as an affiliate, I do get a commission if you use this discount, but it's, I'll put the link below the notes for this particular video, and you can click on it to try out Grammarly Premium for yourself. If you have questions about Grammarly Premium, please let me know in the comments section below.